hop on wood to me it's a manifestation of the intent to live well amongst nothing in a way there's been no direct support for this except through the people who wanted to see this place actually grow there's no institutional aspect to it it's just people you don't find that a lot and these clearings well that's the counterbalance, isn't it? Which is the situation with all of the clearings, regardless if it's with Caltrans or any city. It's seeing people lead a life outside of the system that is not allowed. Because the economic system and everything that goes along with it is the way through which we, you know, get water, food, the necessities of life. And to see people managing that without it, in the midst of it, not just like, you know, people, tribes people in a faraway land, but people actually breaking out of the system, the ones who survive and thrive out here. I don't think they hate it, I'm sure some people do, but a lot just look at it like, eh, that's not right. <laughs> That's not how I live. And they just sweep it away without much thought. Cobb on Wood is the greatest manifestation within a homeless encampment in history. It is the flagship of impossibility in the garbage heap of futility. I was fearing homelessness like for 30 years as I became an adult and had to be self-supporting. The, the one nagging thing of why I get so stressed out about money is like, I'm gonna be homeless. That's the worst possible thing. It's a void of the worst fate imaginable. Oh, to be homeless. Oh, I gotta work. I gotta keep it going. I gotta keep it going. And that stress was killing me. I didn't even know what the fuck. I knew community was right, but I could never get it going. And then I came here, and the rough, raw, rude, essential community form <clears throat> was happening. We are here at a homeless encampment in Oakland, uh, California, um, under the freeway. It's a project called uh, Cobb on Wood. Uh, this was a, a community service center uh, built last year um, to serve the residents here at the Wood Street encampment. Uh, there's about 250 people living here at this encampment. And so we built a kitchen and uh, a clinic and a free store and a pizza oven and a little sleeping cabin. Uh, and we have nice gardens and we have a little mobile cob house. And uh, we built these structures actually um, all out of pallets, right? So these were pallets insulated with, um, well, trash. Uh, there's lots of garbage here that needed to go somewhere. Um, uh, foam, there's lots of foam laying around, clothes, cardboard. And we put that inside the pallets and then we put a cob plaster um, over that, you know, just nice earthen plaster. And then we did a lime, lime plaster over that. Just because there's a, a slight difference of the way that we might want to live, and, and, and that's not, we want to live in filth and trash and stuff. When I talk about a different way of living, it's like we, people out here don't want to slave uh, 80 hours a week uh, for somebody who's becoming a billionaire looking down on everybody from their, uh, one of their uh, 20 mansions on the hill and everybody else is struggling and stuff. There are people out here, they just want to appreciate and enjoy life uh, to the fullest because life is so short. So. Uh, we, we, we're, there's a message that we're trying to get across is that it's not uh, people that are lazy or that everyone out here is on drugs or, or, or crazy or, or, or what. It, it's a, it's a, a different way of living that was a way of living that centuries ago people were living this way in communities. In, in Africa and in rural areas in China and stuff, they're still living this way with community where everything is, is their food is grown. You know, everything that they do, they make things out of, out of trees and rocks and 
you know, everything is, is from the Mother Earth and, and it's not uh, abundance of wastefulness and stuff. And that's uh, what we're trying to go back to is just being a little bit closer to one another. When we first did it, it was to be kind of to serve, you know, the whole community, but then we realized that we really actually wanted to provide housing for people, like that was really important. And so we, um, we now have people living in this space. So there's somebody living in here now. You can see here, this has a, you know, the, the city came here and they put this no trespassing. This is the state property. This area is scheduled for cleaning on uh, September 26th, which is tomorrow begin at 8 a.m., all persons must leave, da da da, da. So, we, um, so yeah, that's what's happening right now, is that this cob on wood, as fantastic as it is, is under threat of eviction. So everybody living at this encampment is being forced to leave because they don't want people living under the freeway. So, uh, so we've been having this rally here today. There's gonna be a big uh, rally tomorrow, uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, to, to try to you know uh, protect our space and uh, you know to try to prevent the Caltrans the police from evicting uh, people from the space. Not very many of the candidates came to the unhoused and asked them, "What should we do? What do you need? What's it going to take? What, how are you going to get back indoors?" Stuff like that. The answers reside with us. We have a lot of hardworking people and a lot of intelligence and wisdom, and they just. You know, oh, you're then housed. You know, they'll bleed you for information and use it for their portfolios and their resumes and their promotion, and leave you in the lurch. I mean, I'm trying to get off the curb myself to get my house back, get my family back in order. But I'm never going to abandon my fucking people. What is liberty? It's goddamn time. They find a way to get you time slaves, and you just can never get out above and get to the expression that you must do for your heart and your humanity. But I found the way to have my time without rent. Oh, no. Liberty is time. We're hoping that this project here, the Cobb on Wood project, can, can serve as a, as a model to inspire other uh, homeless encampments around the state and the country to do something similar. Um, if there is a piece of land that is not being utilized, such as this, um, you know, have people come together and uh, you know build structures like this. Because I really, I think this really is a great solution for, for super quick, low cost, fire resilient, well insulated, all natural, uh, beautiful structures as a great alternative to what they're all often doing now is just buying these little tough shed, little tool sheds, or little white boxes that are having people uh, stand. But, you know, those have no soul, and these, these have, you know, a lot more character. If you make the city look good, and you're no problem, and no one's complaining about you, they'll leave you the fuck alone, okay? And, and that's kind of how it goes. But if you've got haters out there, you've got grudgers, or you've got people that want your land space, like, say, uh, Rick Holiday, okay, and his development, his, his huge conglomerate business of affordable housing, which is not affordable for anybody that actually lives in any of these districts and are not for the people by the people, but actually lofts. And he's the king of lofts. He made the clock tower in San Francisco, right? He does make beautiful spaces, but just not for us. I'm born in a box, commute in a box, work in a box, die in a box. And get as isolated and as bored and as hopeless and collapsed as you possibly can get. In the long run, all of this will be rebuilt tenfold, even bigger, more powerful, uh, more resourceful, and more people will see us, more people will join the cause and realize what's really going on here and stuff. No, this is just the beginning of something that's gonna be bigger and more beautiful in the long run. This doesn't stop anything, it slows it down. And this was an introductory to how things are gonna be in the upcoming decades and stuff and how uh, the, the country, people in this country are going to be moving forward and, and, and to appreciate and enjoy life more and that capitalistic way of living, which I'm not disrespecting at, any, at, at all and stuff, but it has to be a change in the way that people are being treated. We can't be a society that goes to church and preaches God things and, 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 and then we have a community of unhoused people that are starving and can't get the treatment that they need and, and just thrown to the curb. That's not fair. This land is your land.
this land is my land, from California to New York Island, from the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters, this land was made for you and me.